Hi, my name is Veronica Condurraga. I'm a law professor at Universidad Adolfo Ibáñez in Chile. In this class and the next one, we will deal with the UN Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, CIDO. CIDO was approved by the UN General Assembly in December of 1979 and entered into force in September of 1981. It has been described as the International Bill of Rights for Women. It is the second most ratified UN Human Rights Treaty, with 189 state parties as of April 2016. CIDO is a landmark treaty, which applies to all forms of discrimination against women. CIDO Article 1 defines discrimination against women as any distinction, exclusion or restriction made on the basis of sex which has the effect or purpose of impairing or nullifying the recognition, enjoyment or exercise by women, irrespective of their marital status, on the basis of equality of men and women, of human rights and fundamental freedoms in the political, economic, social, cultural, civil or any other field. Thus, discrimination against women is defined in terms of its impact on the enjoyment of their rights and does not require an intent to discriminate. So, even some measures taken with a benevolent purpose, such as protecting women by prohibiting them to perform dangerous jobs, may qualify as discriminatory under CIDO. States must ensure that women, as well as men, have equal opportunities to choose their jobs and to work safely. If some occupations are considered dangerous for women, states and employers must take measures to stop assaults on women rather than curtailing their autonomy. Because discrimination against women is embedded in our cultures, states are called not only to abstain from direct discrimination, but also to avoid indirect discrimination. Indirect discrimination may occur when laws and policies are based on seemingly gender-neutral criteria which in their actual effect have a detrimental impact on women. For example, state policies which shorten the state of hospitalized patients bear down on women disproportionately because the patient will need more care at home and in most of our societies women are the primary caretakers of the sick. According to Article 2, letter E of CIDO, state parties must also take all appropriate measures to eliminate discrimination against women by any person, organization or corporation. One of the most pernicious acts of discrimination in the private sphere is violence against girls and women. Violence against women is discriminatory because it is applied to disciplined women and to keep them in subordinated roles. As a living treaty, however, CIDO is now fully applicable to violence against women. The CIDO Committee, the monitoring body of the treaty, declare in its general recommendation number 19 that gender-based violence is discrimination within the meaning of CIDO's definition and that violence against women may breach specific provisions of the Convention even if those provisions do not expressly mention violence. State may be responsible for private acts if they fail to act with due diligence to prevent violations of rights or to investigate and punish acts of violence. CIDO imposes the following obligations on states. First, to respect, that is, to refrain from violating women's rights. Second, to ensure, meaning the state must pass laws and take other measures, including the investigation and prosecution of criminal acts against women to guarantee that women's rights are indeed respected. Third, to promote women's rights 
and to take measures to overcome the prevailing gender relations and the persistence of gender-based stereotypes that affect women. Article 5, letter A. Some authors see the obligations to promote as one more manifestation of the obligations to ensure. Yet, this provision reinforces the idea that it is an autonomous obligation. And fourth, to take positive steps toward improving the de facto position of women. CIDO's Article 4 refers to the concept of special temporary measures, commonly and wrongly named positive discriminations. There are two different kinds of measures. First, temporary measures which are aimed at accelerating the de facto equality between men and women. CEDO Committee Recommendation number 25 makes clear that temporary special measures are not exceptions to the norm on, of non-discrimination, but rather part of a necessary strategy by state parties directed towards the achievement of substantive equality. The conditions where women may have the same access to resources and power that men have. The committee explains that the word special should not be understood as casting women as weak, vulnerable and in need of extra or special measures in order to participate or compete in society. The real meaning of special in Article 4 is that the measures are designed to serve a specific goal. Once this goal is achieved, for example, when political parties and citizens get used to see women in Congress and would support women candidates, even without the existence of a mandatory quota, temporary measures shall end. The second kind of special measures established in CEDAW's Article 4 are not temporary. These are measures directed to guaranteeing proper conditions for maternity and to facilitating integration of that role with women's full participation in civil, social, political and economic life. The committee has recommended state parties to clearly distinguish between temporary special measures to accelerate the achievement of concrete goals and the provision of general conditions in order to guarantee the civil, political, economic, social and cultural rights of women and the girl child designed to ensure for them a life of dignity and non-discrimination. Gender inequality is so deeply entrenched in our worldviews and practices that many times its unfairness is not perceived. This invisibilization of women's subordination is the greatest obstacle to the achievement of equality for women. In that context, Article 5 of CIDO plays a prominent role concerning the third objective of the Convention to address prevailing gender relations and the persistence of gender-based stereotypes. State parties must address fixed parental gender roles and ensure that family education includes the recognition of the common responsibility of men and women in the upbringing and development of their children. The substantive articles of CIDO bring together internationally accepted human rights principles and make clear that they are applicable to women. Articles 6 to 16 identify areas in which discrimination is most marked, such as trafficking and exploitation of prostitution, political and public life, international organizations, nationality, education, employment, healthcare, family benefits, financial credit, participation in recreational activities and cultural life, the rural sector, equality before the law, legal capacity, freedom of movement, and within the family. There is much to say about CIDOS in each of the, these topics. 
If you want to examine any of these subjects in depth, you are invited to consult the recommended bibliography of this class. Thank you for watching this class. Please visit our website mukchile.com and you are cordially invited to watch the next class which will be devoted to the monitoring mechanism of CEDAW.